Hey, I was just thinking, maybe this show we do something different. Maybe it, you know, not suck. And now, broadcasting from the hatchback of a 72 Ford Pinto, it's the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Need an education on how to grow your business? The Nice Guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Word here, and then I'm gonna go. I'm going to grab my guitar. Hold on. Okay, Doug. <laughs> you don't want to hear Doug sing. That's you know he's walking away right now to get his guitar. But you don't want to hear him sing, which you're going. hearing in the distance. Hold on. I mean, maybe you don't want to hear me sing. I don't. I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait. Oop. Sorry. Hold on. Hmm. A lot of a lot of prep goes into this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, nice guy community. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is us. My name is Strickland Bonner. Doug Sandler on the other side of the microphone. And apparently we're starting this episode with the nice guy blues. Here we are talking about bomb bomb. You can put videos into your email. And it can really make you personalized. Whether you're a guy or a girl or maybe even your email. Yeah, you gotta make that connection, and that's the way to do it with Bomb Bomb. You can put video into your emails today. And if you need to schedule them, you can do it with Acuity, because it's an incredible scheduling program, and it's incredibly cheap. But it works really well. It can be tied in with MailChimp and all of your other C-Weber and all the other kinds of ones you need. If you sign up for Interview Valet, you may need Bomb Bomb and Acuity to put it all together because Acuity is going to keep track of all the schedules for all the podcast interviews that you're going to be getting signed up for. And then Bomb Bomb is going to tell all these people how great you are because they can see you personally and you can talk to them and they can see how interesting you are. And you can get them on the podcast and you can do more podcasts and get more business and get more customers. And now- <laughs> Yeah, bomb bomb acuity interview lay. Click the links in the show notes now. Yeah. That was that, that was, was train wreck. Ridiculously <laughs> good. I mean, I'm come on. Who would not want to be a part of the advertising? platform <laughs> the nice guys if you didn't quite get it bomb bomb acuity and interview valet that's who we were talking about right there in the nice guy blues bomb bomb can put videos easily and quickly into your emails acuity is incredible scheduling interview valet tom and his team can help you get yeah, that, podcast that's... interviews teach you how to do podcast interviews i didn't even realize how much these three three things all can tie together i know you did, you did such a good job of tying them together yeah, you like that that's what happened <laughs> happens when i make it up as i go along sometimes it actually works so uh good morning strickland bonner my name yeah. is doug sandler this is the nice guys on business podcast did we actually uh did we say that yet maybe we should get to the promise statement because anybody listening for the first time is like what the fuck just happened <laughs> what what are you doing wait did i tune into the right podcast was this a business podcast <laughs> well apparently it must be a business uh, podcast well it's the nice guys on business podcast uh yeah so here's the promise statement from the nice guys to provide a learning experience that is entertaining, no doubt, and adds value to your life. Well, we still have to prove that yet, right? But we will. I mean, come on now. We had, um, we had. Uh, who was our Monday interview? Do you remember? Monday interview was uh, Matt Miller. Matt Miller, yeah. And Friday coming up, Friday's oh, interview coming up. Peter, Peter Shankman, Shankman so the ridiculous zombie loyalist author. Oh my gosh, this is going to be off the chain good. If you have not tuned into the Nice Guys on Business podcast yet, if this is the first time you have had a chance to do this, yeah, this is all we got. <laughs> it doesn't get any... Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on. You know what, Strick? I haven't done this in a long time. Doesn't oh, get any... got to ring the bell. Yeah. Does not get any worse than that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or any better than that either. My bell goes back to where it, where it belongs. Right. And we hit it on it yesterday very quickly. Wherever you're from, wherever you're listening, please give us a shout out call 1-424-235-3684 which is 4242 dj doug and leave us a message and a shout out and saying hey i'm from here and and i love you guys or or i hate you guys or you guys suck or whatever the hell you want to say um but we want to hear from you and where you're from 
couple of really quick things because today we actually are going to get to a topic. Uh, yesterday, yes, so I, I came up. Normally, just so you all know the agenda, normally I come up with maybe 10 or 15 topics of this, of conversation, and we usually get to maybe eight or nine. At least that has been our history. <laughs> and, well, we, and we feel bad because we, we... Well, we'll, we'll get be, to eight or nine over the course of our three episodes from the week. <laughs> maybe Not like so. eight or nine every episode. Used to be, though, Strick, that I would send you a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of things, and we would actually attack those, and it was... It was it was bad. <laughs> it yeah. really was it was bad. And we have found that we actually are do much better when we only come up with one topic and then we don't get to that one. <laughs> so, we just need to try to get to it. Now we have two then. So we have yesterday we were gonna get into why association is huge, and today is scheduled for motivation we get from quotes. Do you want to go over both or do you want to pick one or the other? Do we have to go over either? <laughs> is none? <laughs> oh great. Okay. So you're gonna send me three topics and over three episodes we're gonna get to none of them. Is that what you're trying to say now? I mean yesterday I was a really wanna... good episode. It was entertaining, Qu- even though we didn't get to the topics, but come on. Quick mention, quick mention the Be More Biz Conference, seventh, eighth, and ninth of November. Click on the show art there. There's a link to get more information right from the website. Also, the boot camp for building bigger business. Click on that. I know we're getting into this stuff quick. I want to get to the topics. I really want to get to the topics. Do you do we need to expand it on any of these things? I don't think so, but you just told me that, you know, are we going to get to the topics? You don't yes. do we have to get to them? Yes, we are going to get to the we are going to get to the topics, I promise you. So uh that's part of the promise statement too. Okay. All right, I, let's let's uh, well, let's put everything aside for a second. We've promoted the Be More Business Conference ad nauseum. People know about it. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Go there. Go to the show notes. You know, you know already how to get there. The boot camp for building a bigger business. It's there too in the show notes. DC Podfest. It's in there too. Click on the show art while you're doing that. Just click on the recommend button. Thank goodness there is not a dislike button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, the dislike button is actually my Twitter account. If you want to, if you want to lambast us, if you want to say that's a word, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used a word properly. That was a good one too. Lambast. Oh, I haven't heard that word in a long time. Very properly used and interesting, appropriate in this particular case. Very perfect. Excellent. If you would like to harpoon us, <laughs> please do that on my Twitter account. I would be happy to take whatever criticism that you could possibly offer. We assume that because we're getting 40,000 downloads in the in the month of October and we've got 35,000 in the month of, no, uh, what's the month right before October? September. Mm, September. And we got 30,000 in the month of August that we're heading in a right trend, 30, 35, and now 40,000. We're heading in the right direction. Either that or we got a bunch of idiots that listen to this show that just like the entertainment value but don't like us and and don't know how to unsubscribe. Yeah, what was the line with Howard Stern in the movie where they said yeah, yeah. people that like Howard listen for an average of 60 minutes a day and people that hate him listen for an average of two hours a day. So I don't know <laughs> if we're doing the same thing, but you know. Hey, listen, if at all we could be compared to Howard Stern, I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I was a fan of Howard when he was, uh, when he was in the more normal set. I think when he started to let all of the, um, uh, popularity kind of get to his head. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if he ever let it get to his head, but he was just, he was so overly done. I see he was everywhere. No, I agree. I'm not a huge Howard fan. I'm fucking but, I mean, he built jealous. Something. I want to be everywhere. It's true. I'd love to be <laughs> everywhere too. Give me the opportunity to be everywhere. Okay. Right. What was that show that he was on? What's the da- uh, not Dancing with the Stars? What the hell is the name of that? The oh, show? Yeah, yeah, the the, the uh, America's, America's got, got America's talent. got I'll tell you, yeah, America's got talent. Now he has actually um, injected himself into so many places. It's crazy. How does a guy like that do that? I don't know, but you know, are we going to get to the topics today? <laughs> yeah, you're like really- you're already getting off on the tangent. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, the to- which one do you want to cover? You tell me. I don't care why association is huge or motivation we get from quotes. Well, I, I, what I have found is I, I go to, and I know that a number of people in the nice guy community, and the reason that we even ha- are having things like the Be More Biz Conference and going to DC Podfest and all of the things that we do, I have found that I tend to work much better, much more efficiently. I'm much more productive when I find out what other people in my world, in whatever that world is that you do, that world that I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I go to people and and I associate with people that are doing what I do, I find I'm like, I can't believe I've built a business with the, the knowledge that I've had in my head. And I go to these conferences and I'm like, I, I get so inspired by going to all of them. You know, do you go to as a part of your business? Do you go to any conferences at all? Occasionally? Yeah. Uh huh. So what about in the band world? When's the last time you went to a band conference? No, never. Never. Isn't that, do you find that a little unusual? I don't know. It's a different kind of thing. You know, with the band world, 
the Washington Talent Agency does my booking, so I'm not really responsible for finding clients or creating customers for that. So that's kind of a different thing. All right, but 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 hold on, you just looked at you just took a, a very small uh, portion of actually what goes on with a client. How about the fact that um, what your 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 design, what your set design, your stage design looks like? How about your phone calls and making it more easy, easily to easy to have a conversation with your clients? How about uh, trends in the wedding and the bar mitzvah industry how about um you know new ways in which to accomplish your job uh, better and easier any of that stuff that's all stuff that's on the table for you for what you do and i'm not criticizing you as a result of it i think magicians and magicians i think musicians in general are far too disorganized to actually put something like that together no, I mean, oh come on there's got to be there's got to be conferences i've never seen like, conferences like that i've seen who could be DJs. any more hey when you people, go to these DJ, you've seen dj conferences like this right you've been mm-hmm. to them right And the people that go to them, are they like the, in general, accomplished business people? Or is it like, you know, guys that are kind of trying to figure out how to DJ? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, I would think that the same people that go to uh, DJ conferences would be the same type of person. And I'm not taking anything away from DJs or taking anything away from uh, musicians. I just think they're the same mentality when it comes to I'm a creative, I'm not a business person. And I think that if we put ourselves strict, and and I'm not saying this to toot my own horn, but I have become the most successful DJ in our market here, not because I'm a great DJ. It's because of the things that I have learned at, at associations and in other businesses that I've run that have I've brought into this DJ world. It's it's very simple in a world filled with guys that have no idea how to service a client. Um, not, and I don't want to say, I'm not casting, a, it sounds like I'm casting a pretty wide net. I, I don't mean to make it sound that way. 95% of the guys that are in my business think it's all about that four-hour gig. Right. And it is so little about the four hours. Anybody, you know, I, I had a client, I had a, um, a guest at a party that I did on Saturday night. She came up to me at the end of the party and said, you are the best DJ that I've ever seen. And I said, hey, I appreciate that. What What did you like so much about the event because I like to try to figure it out. She says, well, you know, I I was at a party last weekend and they played the same music. It was just the way you presented the music. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I I didn't say this, but I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking the way that you present Uptown Funk and Ain't Too Proud to Beg and, you know, and Sugar Pie Honey Bunch and Thriller and every other song that you would typically play at a wedding or a bar mitzvah, let's say. Yep. It is truly about the way that you, I agree with her. It's a way, it's the way you present it. I only can play 60 songs at a wedding. You know, perception is reality. You know, we've talked about that. And I think last week we talked about Apple versus PC. And I personally believe that one of the reasons that Apple is as popular as it is, is because it's such a slick product. And so the perception is that it's better. And that's why people pay a lot more for it. And I totally agree. If I'm playing a guitar solo for, uh, play that funky music and I'm just kind of standing there looking bored <laughs> right. people are going to be like he's not so great but as soon as i try to, as soon as i play it behind my head people are like that's the most amazing guitar player i've ever seen because that's their perception and it's, it's so important okay so i'm not and let's bring this back to the to the topic at hand here which is why association is so huge and meaning why is association with other people in your industry so huge wait a minute did be- you just steer something back to the top <laughs> i just wanted to make sure that we were making the point this is the yes. first no we're switching <laughs> roles here doug is actually steering the conversation back to the center again okay keep I, going I, please. I think what and i you maybe lose my entire train of thought here but i'm what i'm assuming that what it comes down to is the things that you learn you, you're not going to learn necessarily showmanship when you're at a when you're at an association now you may because if they're if they're like the dj conferences that i've gone to and probably like the band conferences that i'm sure exist that you don't think exist rick um, but every other thing else that's out there whether it's uh, uh meeting professionals international or national speakers association or the national association for catering and events or the c-suite network those are four or five different conferences and uh and networks that i associate and affiliate with all of the things, maybe not necessarily the tactics of being better at being a human being, you know, you, the, that's down to the core. But these are like the tactics that you use on a daily basis, is, is daily basis in order to be more productive. And, and, and let me make a case in point here. With the association that we have had on the show and whether we feel like this is a um, 
this is a very loosely tied network or not. You know, the Nice Guy community is a pretty strong network. It's our network and it's a great network. How many of the of the um, partners that we've gotten, like Bomb Bomb and Acuity and Interview Valet, would we have met had we not been in our in our business and we had not been open to the idea that there's a better way to do things? No, it's it's so true. It's it's absolutely true, and you know. To kind of also focus back on the point that I think you were probably trying to get to along these lines with DJing, let's say, for example, right? And this applies to any business. What you've learned and what I've learned also is that what you think is important is not necessarily what's important. And sometimes the only way to find that is to connect with other people that do the same business and hear from them and talk, or that do other businesses as well. Because really, Doug, how many DJs are there out there that think to themselves, you know what, it's not about my personality. It's all about the music. Okay, you don't want to make it about your personality like you have a big ego, but you do need to make it about the way you present. And so- you learned that from seeing other DJs and meeting with other DJs. And it's the same thing with any business. If I'm selling a widget, maybe I think the color of my widget is the most critical thing. And another businessman may point out to me, you no. know what? I've got widgets that are all different colors and I sell all colors equally. And it's like, oh, maybe it is that. Or maybe it's the way your marketing is. Or who knows? You, you got to talk to you. got to find out what your, your customer wants. And one of the areas that we really haven't got into that association of in any kind of way is really through the podcast. You know, our podcast, I mean, we have with, with, um, with like partners that we've developed and people in the business, but the actual business of running a podcast, you know, you and I, we really know very little, uh, you, it would be, if somebody would actually see the equipment <laughs> that I'm actually have done 200, what episode is this? 200 and what? 200 230 something. Yeah. Okay. So 230 or whatever it is, if you would actually see the the hodgepodge of paper clips that basically <laughs> is holding the shit together that I use. I mean, I have a really good microphone and you have the same microphone too. But uh I, I have an adapter. I have I'm looking at I'm looking at gaff tape screws. Yeah, you need to take uh, a picture a, of that so we can see it. But <laughs> yeah, this is the podcast crazy. that's held together with paper clips and bubble gum, definitely. So we really don't know much. And again, not that that is the only thing that has to do with the podcast, but you know, it probably took us over a hundred episodes before we really started to to um, develop a, a question and answer sheet for the people that come on the show. And then it wasn't until recently, only within the last couple of months that I even started using a, ske- using a scheduling program. All of these things came as a result of me just saying, there's got to be a better way. Right. And you know, if we gotta- had taken more time early on to maybe go to a podcast convention or talk to other podcasters, we could have made that learning curve so much faster, right? So, so nice guy community, think about the things that are going on in, in your life right now, like the businesses that you're running or the business that you run. If you're in real estate, do you go to, to conferences? If you're in retail, do you look at how to have not just to sell your products in your store, but how to market them online or how do you how do you my my wife is a an event planner and for her it's all about style and staging and how how much better which it's funny when we go into like um uh, we have Wegmans, which is a supermarket chain that's that's on the east coast i don't think it goes beyond the east coast but uh she goes into the store and she actually will either look at their ideas and get inspiration from the ideas about the way they market and then she, or she'll even go into a store that she sees is not set up really well and she'll start making i don't know if anybody in your life does this it's so funny when she does this she'll walk into a store that has like um i don't know let's just say they're little notepads and the notepads don't really look attractive on the uh you know in the stationary stores you know the way they set them up right. she'll literally set them up <laughs> like she, she she will she will make sure that it's like it, staging is everything and it's so true the way that you present yourself and the way that you present your product and the way that you present your services is um is almost as critical as the service itself and we t- and we talked about that i think a couple episodes ago just about you can have a really shitty product or a really shitty service but if marketed in the right way you'll at least lead people to your product or service it's so true yeah, that presenting yeah, is shortcut. incredibly important, but that it may be different for different things. In other words, like let's say your wife is a, as an event planner, right? And she's kind of a higher end one, right? But you need to present in a very specific way to, to convey that to your customers. But maybe if you are an event planner and you are looking for, uh, you know, 
day of. Maybe you're more budget. Maybe you present yourself in a different way because you don't want to scare off customers that have a lower budget. It, but it's so important because you may think that you know how to present your product. But yep. until you see what other people, different ways that they've presented a similar product, you you don't necessarily know. Well, look at your industry too. Look, all you need to do is go to Google and Google whatever industry that you're in. And again, whether it's real estate or retail or in uh, in the heating and cooling business or as an auto mechanic or whatever, or in the sign making business, whatever it is that you do, I promise you. There, I um I do webinars for a. Uh, and again, I would not think that this necessarily was a business that has conferences, but um, if, not just franchises that have conferences for their people to buy their franchise, but there is a franchise, there's an association of franchise owners. So they get together to try to, to try to figure out how to systemize, systematize, systemize, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. how to figure out the industry itself, not just the individual franchise, but how to sell the idea of selling franchises. Right. Right. It's amazing. There's, there's an association of associations. It's crazy. It's the, so crazy. So put yourself in a position to 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 get learning from others that are in your world um, as well. If there's things like the, – that's partly why we put together the Mastermind Group. We didn't do it to promote the show. Right. There's nothing about our Mastermind program that we're putting together that is a show promo. I mean, you guys, look at – we're, spe- we're, we're charging 295 bucks, And I'm not saying this as a promo for the show, for the uh, conference and the Mastermind. But I am telling you, Strick and I are pulling not one cent. As a matter of fact, we're probably going to lose money on the uh, on the conference. We're not doing it as a way to advertise us. We're doing it because we know the importance of getting together, of um, of the kinship that comes together, of the family that comes together, of the of the knowledge base that you bring to the table when you meet with other people that are not within your industry as well. And that's so, also why we're keeping it so small. We're only keeping it to 10 people because as soon as you get to, let's say 20, 25 people, it's a different vibe. Like you cannot have a group of 25 people sit down in a, you know, in like a, a circle and, and everybody talk because there's too many people, 10 people Everybody can, can. Everybody contributes. Exactly, everybody. you can contribute, and and nobody feels intimidated. Like, oh, my business isn't big enough, or isn't important enough for me to bring up with this group. No, no, it's everybody's is, and that's what's great about a small group. And there's, it's, it's I can't wait to do this. It's gonna be. Fun. We had we had this guy on the show. Uh, I don't know if you remember him. His name is Kevin Conroy, and I don't remember what episode. It was probably in the in maybe even under a hundred, and uh, and Kevin developed a business of just the network. That's all he did. He became a, a a people connector. He had three meetings a day, and I can't remember the exact uh, the exact stats. But um, the guys, I think, probably in his thirties right now. He had um, three meetings a day starting at the age of sixteen, and he developed his network. And his network grew so big. Um, and it was never a self-promoting network. It was always a network of, um, let me do what I can do to help you and connect you with other people. That's all his intent was the entire time of building this network. He's built a business, multi, multi, multi million dollar business out of just connecting people. And it, it's so true about life just being a series of connections. If you look at it and you say, what can I get out of it? Maybe it's not necessarily the, the right approach. Maybe the approach is, what can I teach to other people? people that I'm going to meet or how can I help other people to get ahead? These conferences are filled with people that want to help. That's all they do. Uh, Many of the conference speakers that go to these things, unless they're like the the big gun keynote speakers, most of these guys that go and speak at these conferences and session speakers, all they want to do is share their message. They want to see what they can do in order to advance people that are listening. It's a very uh, non-selfish position to be in. I I can't I can't tell you the number of times that I've actually taken money out of my pocket, flown to a a a foreign location to me that I've never been, uh, spoke about a message that is comfortable to me, and had people ask me information about it. And I don't I'm not looking necessarily at the money. I'm looking at it as a way to build my contacts because that's really what this life is all about: the connections that you make. Kevin Conroy Smith was episode number 44. Like way, <laughs> way the fuck yeah. back. He, yeah. And what's important is he's met at least three people a day for the past 15 years. It's not that he sets three meetings a day. He meets three new people that he has never met 
every single day for the last 15 years. It's, it's crazy. crazy. If you want to go and, back in the back in the rack, do that one. Yeah, well, he, and what's interesting is he believes in randomizing connections to get people out of their comfort zone and meet people that they otherwise wouldn't. And so there's two things with that. There's first of all, getting out of your comfort zone, which is incredibly important because you're not going to grow if you keep doing the same things that you're comfortable with and that you do all the time. But also the randomizing, you know, it's a quote that I've thrown out a couple times about uh, TD Bank when they first started opening on Saturdays and Sundays and the CEO went to a banking conference and the other banking CEOs were like, how do you find people that can work on a Saturday and work on a Sunday? And <laughs> you <he's> like, <laughs> Walmart's been doing it for years, right? Because you get so stuck in your own business and in your own head. Like if I'm in the banking industry, it's just assumed it's the status quo that people are going to work until five o'clock and they're not going to work on Saturday and not work on Sunday. But that's bullshit, you know? No, you we, we, uh, you've got to, you've got to change, change, uh, the way that you're doing things in order to change things, uh, in your life. Um, Jeffrey Hazlett, who I, I'm, a mem- I'm a member of his, um, of his C-suite network, uh, he talks about this thing called step and repeat. And it basically is create a system that you think is good and just keep repeating it. I think too often times we get caught in the, ah, uh, that didn't work. You know, I love my brother and David, I know you're listening to this podcast, uh, but David is probably guilty of something that many, many, many people are guilty of. And I, and I would have to say a number of times I'm guilty of it too, but specifically, you know, I, I see it in that we all want to do a single action or an action once or twice or three times, let's say, and hope to get um, immediate results out of it. Not immediate results, but uh, results quickly through the process. And, you know, David and I, we talk about this a lot because I I think that of the two of us, I'm like, I kind of, I go into it with the expectation that doing something once or twice or three times is not going to result in any level of success. Now, because he's a popular guy in the market that we, that we are in in Baltimore, um, he tends to do something and it works for him very quickly. But the result of it, if I do something once or twice, it's like, ah, oh, shit, it never works once or twice. Right. You know, he, so when, when he started to really promote his book, part of it is, um, he wants to go out and speak more about his book. And I keep telling him, you gotta, gotta hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer it. And it's just not one of the things that he, that, you know, that he's, uh, that he's big on. <laughs> if it, if it, if it creates work, David, you agree with me here? <laughs> if it creates work, then he's not necessarily the, um, y- you know, it, it's challenging to get him to get to the next step. And, I, and I've tried many, many times like, hey, you just got to do it. Just do it. Just promote. Just promote. Uh, very difficult. Very difficult. But the, um, the networking world, the association world, it's all, about, it's all about learning stuff. It's all about meeting people that do things differently than you. And, um, and it really is a huge learning experience. So I really encourage people to get to those as, as often as you can. Go out and find it. Go out and do it. Find other people that are in your industry. Find people outside of your industry. Find people in a complementary industry. Just go out and meet people. It's so important because you don't know everything about your business. You may think you do, but nobody does. You need to always be learning. This sounds like we're actually wrapping things up. <laughs> oh my God. This is like hey, we wait, actually uh, had a plan this time. We had a plan and did we uh did are we under time? Are we on time or we're we were twenty seven minutes and so we're keep we're under thirty minutes. It's amazing. Nice guy community. We we would like to give you the extra three minutes to go and get a cup of coffee before you actually walk into your <laughs> office. <laughs> Uh, I, we should wrap it up because I think that we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about yesterday's, um, uh, topics that I did not yet discuss today. We'll talk about them tomorrow. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Hey, nice Nice guy guy. community. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't ever underestimate the power of nice. Steve O'Brien, take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. Because it's such a fine line between stupid and clever. (laughs) 